while back, I got a request from one of my viewers, Nicole. She saw this beautiful chandelier on Amazon for $170 and wanted to see if it was something that I could recreate. The chandelier is made up of large and tiny crystal balls that cascade down in a spiral shape and creates this beautiful spiraling rainfall look. It's called the Spiral Raindrop Crystal Chandelier. For one that is 40 inches long, it'll cost $230. But today I'm gonna to show you how you can make a spiral crystal raindrop lampshade and hanging chandelier nearly 30 inches long for a fraction of the cost. Honestly, I got this request quite a while back, um, but I didn't know exactly where I would put a large chandelier. I didn't want to change the one that I had already. I also didn't want to make a huge piece and I didn't know where I would put it. I did, however, think I could use a lamp that looks like this. It would be a beautiful lamp. So I decided I'm going to replace this lampshade with a spiral crystal one. To make my lampshade, I'm using an 8 inch harp lampshade ring set, 28 gauge silver wire, 1 and 3 quarter inch raindrop shake acrylic crystals, 8 millimeter round glass crystal beads, and 1 inch wide metal ribbon. Okay, I'm going to start by putting together the base for my lampshade. I ordered this lampshade kit online. This is a harp lampshade kit because that's the type of lamp that I'm using and it costs about $12. So make sure you pay attention to the type of lamp that you're using before you order the kit. I'm also using this metal ribbon and I got this from Dollar Tree. It's about an inch wide. I was so excited to find these. I picked up a bunch of them. They came in different patterns and designs and I'm going to be using this particular design here because it has lots of little holes at the bottom and the top of the ribbon which will be perfect for hanging my beads from. Now since I want my crystals to fall in a spiral I want to attach my ribbon around this ring so that the circle spirals in slightly. So I'm just going to use a little masking tape here so that I could position it and see how this is going to work and how it's going to curve in. And I think I'll have it curve in something like this. It should work kind of a gradual curve in. I don't want the center to be covered up. I want to be able to put my hands through the center part of it. So this metal ribbon I cut at about 36 inches to go around the ring and curl in a little bit. So it's a little over 36 inches. And I want my crystals to hang about an inch and a half apart. And that is about five of these little holes in the ribbon. Uh, I needed to count all the holes in the ribbon on this 36 inch one because I'm hanging crystals and it ended up being 142 openings. So if I divide 142 by five, that would give me 28.4. So now I know I'm going to need to make 28 to 29 crystal strands to hang. But first let's attach the metal ribbon to the ring. And I'm going to start by attaching the edge of this metal ribbon, um, the notch at the bottom onto the first bar of the ring. And by the way, I have the harp ring upside down. So the ribbon will actually be hanging from the bottom of the ring. But I'm going to start by wrapping the thin wire. And this is a um, 28 gauge jewelry wire around the bar a couple of times. I like this wire because it's almost invisible. 
but it is very delicate, so you have to be careful when you're bending it back and forth. Now I'm going to put the first part of the ribbon in place over that notch, and I'm going to thread the wire through the first hole, around the bar, and into the next hole. And I'm just going to continue doing this, going in the hole, around the bar, all the way around. And I'm going to be careful to hold my um, ribbon in position, the same position as it is on that notch. And that is so that the edge of the ribbon is just right below behind the bar. And when you get to that next bar, you want to make sure that notch fits right over it. So as we go along, we're coming to the part where it starts to curl inside the ring. And I want um, the ribbon to go inside the ring, but I want it to also be level with the outside. And since that bar comes up a little bit, I'm going to cut the ribbon right at the bottom so that the bar can go inside the ribbon where that hole is and I can make sure that it is at the same level as the outside ribbon. And now I'll use the holes that are in the center of the ribbon to attach it to the inside bar so that it goes around something like this. And so I also cut the bottom of the ribbon where it falls by the other two bars and tied those together. And just to make the center pieces more stable and to hold them in place, in between each bar, I'm going to extend a wire from the front ring to the back and twist it so that it sort of keeps that inside piece in place. And now I cut it and I'm just twisting that wire inward. So I have something like this is a little more stable since I don't have an inside bar to attach the whole piece to. And as you can see that I did that where the bar is and in between each bar. So now I have a great base to hang all of my strands of crystals from that spirals inward. And now this part is not necessary, but since I do have an extra ring from the kit, I think I'm going to use that to attach to the bottom part of my um, lampshade top just to finish it off. And I'm going to attach it so that the little holes are, are still exposed at the bottom, something like this. And this will also help the ribbon to keep its shape at the bottom and make it more stable. So just like I did for the top, I'm going to hold the bar in place right above the little holes. Then I'm threading the wire through the holes and around the bar. And after I've gone all the way around and that's complete, now I have the top part of my lampshade ready to attach all my crystals. So now let's do that right now. We'll set this aside and create our raindrop crystal strands. Okay, so now to make my strands, I'm using the same 28 gauge silver jewelry wire. And I like this wire because it's so thin and it, it hangs like almost like fishing wire is pretty much invisible and you can also bend it and twist it so I can um, attach it easily to the base. So my first strand, I'm going to make the longest strand. Um, like I said, I'm going to make about 29 pieces. Uh, so I'm going to cut a piece of wire that is about 36 inches long. And after I attach all the beads, I want the strand to be at least 20 inches long. So for this project, I am actually using pieces that I already had. This large crystal is different from the crystal and the inspiration piece. Those are round balls 
And these are actually raindrop shaped crystals that I have. They're not glass, they're acrylic. But I had about 40 of these and I think that these will actually be perfect because they are shaped like teardrops. I am also using these um, crystal beads that I had. This is actually glass and they're eight millimeter um, round crystal beads. But I will put these on my Amazon DIY project page and I'll leave a link where you can get them. So I'm going to start by threading the wire through the largest piece, the teardrop shape that's going to be at the bottom. So I'm going to pull the wire through the hole at the top and um, leave about an inch and a half on the other side. Then I'll take one of my small beads and I'm going to thread that through all the way down to the bottom and um, push that through both those two pieces of wire so that it sits right on top of the large crystal. And then I'm going to twist the excess wire on, in on itself at the top and then cut the excess off really close so that I have something that looks like this. Now all the rest of the pieces will be the small crystal beads and I want the next one to go about an inch up. And to make sure they're all the same distance, I'm going to use a ruler and measure an inch from the last bead. And I'm going to put a little fold in the wire where that um, inch mark is. Then I'm going to take my next bead and move it down to that fold. And I want the bottom part of my bead to be right on the edge of that fold. I'm going to take the wire from the top of the bead and bend it down the side of the bead all the way to the bottom of the bead and then I'm going to wrap that wire around the bottom base a couple of times about two times and then I'm going to thread the rest of the wire up from the bottom of the bead up to the top and pull that all the way through. And that'll keep that strand in place at that one inch mark. So I'm going to do that all the way up to the top. I want my strand to be about 20 inches long. That's the size I measured the length of the longest one for my lamp. Okay, so I created all 29 strands and they gradually go down in size. So let me describe how I did this. The first strand is, uh, like I said, about 20 inches long. It has 15 small glass beads, one inch apart, with an extra bead right directly above it. So 16 in total. The next strand also has 15 small glass beads without the, um, the extra beads. So it goes up just a little bit. So the third strand has 14 small glass beads an inch apart with an extra bead above that. And the fourth strand also has 14 beads without the extra one at the top. So it's gonna alternate two, one, two, one at the top. And Every set, every two will have the same amount, 15, 14, 13, going down in increments. The first one of that set having two crystal beads at the top. So I did this all the way up to the very last crystal strand. And um, this is actually 28 strands, but I added an extra one, which would be 29, so that the large crystal actually goes up to the last two crystals at the top. Okay, so now I can hang my crystals. I'm going to attach my lampshade base to the top of my harp lamp by just screwing it on to the top. And um, this way I can attach my crystals easily. So I'm going to start with the longest strand and I'm going to thread the wire through the very end piece that's in the inside. 
and I'm going to pull the wire all the way up to the um, top so that the crystal falls right below that little um, piece that's below the hole. And then I'm going to wrap the wire around right above the crystal about five times. And then I'll cut the wire really close and sort of tuck that wire in. And next I'm going to count five spaces to hang my next piece. One, two, three, four, five. And get the next um, piece that goes up smaller. Thread that through the hole and wrap it around about five times and cut it. And I'll just continue this until I get all my pieces on. And here is my finished spiral crystal raindrop lampshade. Very nice. And with the light turned on, it looks even more beautiful. Now let's see how this looks in my family room. Yep, a perfect addition. Now as I was working on this, I did think of a place where I could put a hanging chandelier right here in this dark stairwell going down into my basement. So coming up next, I'll show you how I took the lamp that I just made and really brightened up my stairwell by turning this into an actual hanging spiral raindrop crystal chandelier. To make the base for my hanging chandelier, I'm using decorative plastic plates, metallic silver spray paint, two inch wide metal ribbon, remote control battery operated pug lights, 22 gauge silver wire, Gorilla Clear Grip glue, and the hot glue gun. So in order to hang my chandelier from the ceiling, I'm gonna need a base to attach to the ceiling. The inspiration piece has a hood base and it has these puck lights that shine down on the crystals. For my hood base, I'll first need a flat surface that I can attach the puck lights to. And so I can move it wherever I want and I won't have to do any electrical work. I decided to use these battery operated remote control puck lights. Now these are great. They actually come six in a pack. Um, I had these already. I actually have the other three in my closet and they come with two remotes. So um, it's cool because you can adjust the light up and down and this will be perfect when it's hanging from the ceiling. I could just turn it on and off and adjust the lights as I need to. But I'll leave a link for this on my Amazon page also. Now to make that hood light base, I want to have something that is deeper than the lights. So I'm using this two inch metal ribbon to go around the um, base. This ribbon is also something I already had. You can't get this at Dollar Tree. I got this from Michaels and it's a lot more expensive. So if you want to, you can stack two of the Dollar Tree rows together to make it um, wider or higher. Now I thought this would be a good base. I also got this from Dollar Tree but it's um, is solid metal. So I would need to put holes in it or have some way to attach the, um, the metal ribbon to it. So what I decided to do was use this plastic plate, this direct decorative plate. And I believe I got this from Dollar Tree. I'm not sure I had these already, but it already has holes in it so it would be easy for me to attach the other part of the lamp that I made already and also the metal part that I want to use as a hood because this also has holes in it. 
Now, of course, this plastic decorative plate is a little on the flimsy side because it's um, plastic, but if I put a few of them together, I think that it will be strong enough and sturdy enough to hold my light fixture. The crystal light fixture is not heavy at all. The, the heaviest thing will be these pug lights, but I think this will work. So I'm going to use some Gorilla Clear Grip glue and I am going to put glue on the entire inside of the plate and stack them and I want to make sure that the pattern lines up because I want to make sure those holes are in the right place. And then I'll just stack some books on top of this and let it sit and dry for a little bit. So while it's drying, I took my two inch metal ribbon and I wrapped it around my um, lampshade to get the circumference of the, the lampshade. I want to make sure it's the exact size and shape and I want to uh, make a circle out of this ribbon. So I'm just going to cut it where the pattern is. I want actually want it to overlap, but I want the, um, the pattern to line up. So you can use some pieces of wire to um, bind this together into a circle, or um, I am using some Gorilla Clear Grip glue and a little hot glue just to glue the pieces together so that it stays into the shape of a circle. And just to make sure this looks like it's part of the chandelier piece that I made, I'm also going to use that same Dollar Tree one inch metal ribbon and I'm going to put it around this ribbon right in the center. I'm just going to use some Gorilla Glue um, hot glue sticks. I'm going to glue dots in some sections just to attach it so that it looks like this. Also, this will help hide the light a little underneath the hood. Now, going back to the plates that I glued together, I decided I wanted to spray paint this um, silver because everything else is silver. I want to spray paint everything except the inside because that's where I'm gluing the lights. So I'm going to cut out a circle and tape it onto the inside of the plate just to protect that area and I'm going to go outside and spray paint this uh, metallic silver. I don't want this part to be spray painted because I'm going to attach the lights to the center here and those lights come with an adhesive on the back to stick it to the surface. If I have spray paint there it won't stick. I'm using what I already have, but I believe I got these from Dollar Tree, and um, you can probably find them in silver. But I'm using this Rust-Oleum silver spray paint. I'm, I'm going to paint the back and the front of the plate. And here's my plate after it's spray painted. See, I painted the front and the back. And of course, this works much better with my metal pieces. Okay, so to attach my metal ring onto my plate, I'm going to use the 28 gauge wire, the thin wire, and I am going to attach it in sections, just four sections right now. And I'm twist tying these loosely so that I can make sure that the, the circle is centered. Then when it is centered, I'm going to tie that down tighter and add four more sections in between each section and that should be enough to hold the two pieces together. Now this is pretty complete as a hood but after looking at it um, I think I want to add some beads in the in the center to tie it into the chandelier and I know I'm going overboard um, you don't have to do that part but I think I'm going to add some little beads so if you want to do this, I cut a piece of wire about three or four inches and I'm going to um, have that bead suspended in the center of the wire like I did with the crystal pieces by 
looping the, um, the wire over and pulling it through the bottom. And then I'm going to put the top part of that wire in through the top hole of the um, thin ribbon and the bottom part of the wire in through the bottom hole of the thin ribbon where it's open. And then I'm just going to twist the back towards the bottom and, and tie it and cut it. And this is what it looks like. And like I said, it's totally not necessary. It will add a lot of extra time to this project, but it sure is pretty. But anyway, before I place the lights here, I need to put something right in the center at the top of this hood so I can hang it from a hook in the ceiling. So I want to put a wire through here and make it into like a loop that I could attach to, um, to the hook. And since this is plastic, I'm going to use my hot glue gun. I'm not pushing glue out, but I'm just going to press the tip of it onto the piece on the side, each side of that um, center circle. And I'm just going to rotate it back and forth. And the heat from the tip of the gun will melt the plate and um, create a hole. So once the tip starts pushing through, I have this little bubble at the top and I know it's very thin. So at this point, I'm going to take the hot glue gun out and I'm going to stick a skewer through that hole and um, punch it all the way through so that I have a small hole at the top on the side in the center. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the center of that point. So that I have two little holes and I'm going to take my wire that is 22 gauge. I'm going to cut a piece that's about a foot and loop it through a couple of times and twist it to make a small loop at the top of the hood. Now I'm going to attach my lights to the inside of the hood and I want to make sure that these are evenly spaced. It's really important because if it's off, then um, the lamp will tilt to one side. So these come with double-sided sticky super glue tape. So I'm just going to peel the tape off and press it down firmly against the surface. And now my hood is ready to hang. Let me just check to see if it works before I hang it up. I actually need to hang this on um, something to attach my chandelier part to the bottom. So I might as well hang this part on the ceiling right now. But before I hang it on the ceiling, I'm going to attach four pieces of twisted wire onto the bottom of the hood so that I can easily attach my um, chandelier part to. And I'm just tying a wire evenly spaced in four different sections through the holes. And now I can attach it to the ceiling. So I'm screwing a small hook into the ceiling. And you need to find a stud for this. The chandelier itself is not heavy, but the lights with the batteries in it have quite a bit of weight. Also, I had to add an extra piece of wire because the loop I made wasn't big enough. So you might want to make your loop a little bit bigger. So next, now that the hood is hanging, I place my chandelier part directly underneath the hood and I twist tied those four wires to the bars at the top of the chandelier. I also added a few more twist tie wires in between the other ones and then I cut the wires and folded those in. I want to be able to remove this if I don't like it and turn it back into a lamp. So basically that's why I'm just twist tying it together. And one of the main reasons I use that two inch metal ribbon at the base is so that it would give me some space to reach my hand in and remove the lights in case I need to change the battery. So let's see how well that works. Yes, I can take the light out, remove the batteries, replace them, and put them back in. Cool. 
And from the ceiling to the last crystal, this piece hangs about 27 inches. Okay, now let's see what our completed hanging chandelier looks like. Fabulous, I love it. I love the shadows that it creates. And I don't believe I'll be turning this back into a lamp because I love this here. It really does make a beautiful entrance to my basement. It has a unique, ornate look. And I think it'll make a really welcoming lighting as my guests return downstairs to their bedroom. Yes, I really love the way this turned out. Oh, and I just thought of another place that this could go. This would be really nice looking up at from my bathtub. I could put this in my bathroom right over the tub. I think this would be perfect there. Well, Nicole, if you wanted to make a smaller, beautiful version of that spiral crystal chandelier, you can do it. Here it is. And I think you'll be very happy with it. Want more detailed instructions on some of these projects? On my Etsy store, for just a few dollars, you can get instant digital downloads of full color step-by-step -step instructions with templates for some of your favorite projects. And check out my Amazon page where you can pick up my multi-surface acrylic metallic paint. Get 20% off now through the end of August 2022 mix millions of colors and create endless home beauty for indoor and outdoor projects. And while you're there, pick up my Book of Elegant Home Crafts Volume 1. Put all your favorite projects together in one big beautiful colored step-by-step -step instruction book. You can now get separate e-project booklets and also full color printed project booklets will be available on Amazon. On my Amazon page, you'll see all my favorite crafting tools and supplies used on this show, and you can add them all to your cart for the one-click, fast and easy shopping and delivery convenience of Amazon. I'll be working every day to make crafting fun and easy for you. Follow me at Your House of Home and Your House of Home TV on all social media for extra home, food, and gardening tips.